Welcome to episode eight of the Tax Smart Daily, a daily video series for real estate investors exploring tax topics to help you save money and stay out of trouble. I'm Brandon Hall, and before we get started, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll get notifications when we drop new videos, and be sure to check out the Tax Smart Real Estate Investors Facebook group and the Tax Smart newsletter. Links to both of those are in the description of this video. Lastly, if you have any questions or if anything that I say resonates with you, please leave a comment on this video with a timestamp. I love interacting with our community. Your comments and feedback are my oxygen and it means the world to me that you take a little bit of time out of your day to leave a note or ask a question. Now today's topic is about spouses joining or forming LLCs together to then go and buy real estate. And the question is, do I have to file a partnership tax return when I create a jointly owned LLC with my spouse? The answer is always yes. Unless, I know I just said always, in general, the answer is yes. You have to file Form 1065, a partnership tax return, if you're 50-50 or any sort of percentage ownership with your spouse, unless you live in a community property state. You can Google the community property states. I can never remember them off the top of my head. I always have to Google them too. But if you live in a community property state, you do not have to file a Form 1065 to report your LLC's earnings. So if I have four rental properties and I am 50-50 with my spouse on an LLC that owns those four rental properties, if I don't live in a community property state, I have to report the income and expenses related to those four rental properties on a form 1065, 1065. That's a partnership tax filing form. I will then get a K-1 for my form 1040 to plug in. So that's how it kind of flows through to my 1040. That's if I don't live in a community property state. If I live in a community property state, I report my 50% interest in those four rental properties in the LLC on my own schedule E that's connected to my 1040 or supplemental to my 1040. My spouse will have her 50% interest in the four rentals owned by the LLC on her own Schedule E. We'll then make a qualified joint venture election. So if I live in a community property state, I can avoid the Form 1065 filing requirements as long as I report two separate Schedule E's for each spouse, and, and that reflects their percentage interest in the rental properties, and I make a qualified joint venture election. So that's how you avoid the Form 1065 filing requirements. Now, why would we wanna avoid the Form 1065 filing requirements? Because they're expensive. If you come to our firm, we're probably looking at a minimum $1,800 to file a Form 1065. So it, it, it just gets expensive. The compliance increases, partnership tax laws insane. So you want to avoid it if you can. Now, what happens if, uh, actually before we go into non-filing, I do wanna circle back on avoidance. Uh, when I say avoid, you always have to touch base with an attorney. So, you know, it, it, even though a single a single member LLC, for example, is disregarded for tax filing purposes. So, if you have a hundred percent LLC and and you own those same four rental properties, it, we're going to report it straight on your Schedule E, even if it's a joint return. Just one Schedule E, very simple. The LLC basically does not exist. Even though it does exist for tax purposes, it does not exist. However, you might have some legal reasons to go and set up a partnership LLC with your spouse rather than one spouse owning 100% and the other spouse owning zero. There's some charging order protections whenever you have a partnership LLC in place. So make sure that you touch base with your attorney and follow whatever they say as it pertains to whether or not your spouse should have an ownership interest in the LLCs that you're saying that you're setting up. Just know that if your attorney recommends that you each own 50% or one person owns 60, the other 40 or 90, 10 or whatever the split is, if the if the if the attorney is recommending that you set up a partnership LLC with your spouse, joint ownership with your spouse of that LLC, you will have a form 1065 filing requirement unless you live in a community property state. You file those two separate Schedule E's and you make that qualified joint venture election. Now, if you're listening to this and you're going, oh crap, I haven't filed a partnership tax return in a long time and I am 50-50 with my spouse on these LLCs and I don't live in a community property state, what do I do? Never fear, there is an exception uh, or a procedure that allows you to skirt partnership filing penalties if you get found out at some later point. It's called RevProc 84-35. If the, if the IRS ever found out that you had a partnership LLC and you should have been filing a Form 1065, you may, I'm not gonna say you will because it, it's not an automatic blanket 
uh, a procedure that you can apply to everything. So you should go look up Rev Proc 84-35 and make sure that you meet the requirements first. But if you ever get found out, you get a letter and that letter is going to say, hey, you had these partnership filing requirements. You never filed these partnership tax returns. And based on the partnership penalty of whatever, 195 a month times the number of partners times the number of months, you owe us $10,000 in late filing penalties. That's that letter that will be sent to you. And then you reply saying that, hey, under Rev Proc 84-35, we meet those requirements. We meet the, uh, 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 we are a qualified partnership under this revenue procedure. Uh, therefore, we are requesting relief and we will be filing that Form 1065 going forward every single year. So we can do that. We've done that with a few of our clients and it works successfully, but you gotta make sure that your partnership actually qualifies under Revenue Procedure 84-35. So don't go hang your hat on that just by watching this video. Go look up Rev Proc 84-35, look at the requirements, make sure that your partnership does qualify. You gotta be a small partnership and you have to be um, reporting everything on your Schedule E's. Uh, or, or on the partner schedule ease. So make sure, make, 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 make sure <laughs> that you do qualify under that exception and you should be good to go. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of the Tax Smart Daily. I invite you to leave a comment with a question or just tell me what resonated with you and be sure to check the links in the description of this video to join our various communities online. We'd love to have you.